Hey, New Life Church, I'm James Dearman, and I'm the pastor of our Hebrew Springs location. And uh, again, I'm loving just tracking through Matthew with you guys. Uh, chapter 26, we're going to look at uh, verses 47 through 75. And uh, this is coming out of the Last Supper. Then you have uh, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, and then we get to the arrest here, okay? And so let me start reading in verse 47. And we're just going to go line by line. I just want to share some things with you. Uh, it says, while, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Man, this is just so bad. I, I tell you, but I, this is here. This is for anyone who's ever been betrayed. And by the way, it will become increasingly common. I hate to tell you this, but Jesus taught us that many would turn away from him and many would hate and betray each other. And he wasn't talking about the world. He was talking about followers of Christ. Okay. And so this is exactly what's happening to Jesus. One of his very own 12, one of his best buds. Okay. Jesus truly went through everything we will. And so let's keep going. Uh, verse 50, Jesus replied, do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. I know some people feel like, yes, that, that, that's what I would be doing. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled to say it must happen in this way? And you see right here just such an intense desire from Jesus to always obey the will of the father. In verse 55, in that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But this is all taking place so that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. All right, let's look at, let's look at what happens now. Verse 57. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus. Please note that. So that they could put him to death. They were looking for false evidence, not real evidence. But they didn't even find any of that, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and, de and declared, this fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Okay, stop here. I just want to point out that this trial was total misinformation. It was half-truths being twisted. It was false accusation. It was slander. And again, anyone who's going through that stuff, uh, listen, Jesus went through way worse than you did. But you can not only draw some peace from that fact, uh, you can also look at how he handled it and, and, and learn how to do things the way that Jesus would do it. Let's keep going. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But here we go. But Jesus remained silent. He was silent, okay? And here's what I found, that most of the time the Holy Spirit wants me to remain silent too. Um, some, some, some of us, look, we get so bent out of shape when the enemy attacks in this way. Like, what did he say? What did that one say? What did this one say? And listen, that's the enemy's game. He wants to keep you distracted, trying to chase down what everybody's saying. He's trying to get you to waste all of your thought life, all of your emotional energy, everything, when really you should just be doing what you are called to do by God, okay? Uh, you don't need to be wasting all your time and energy defending yourself. You need to look at Jesus and the way he did it, he remained silent. Listen, you don't need to defend yourself because that's not your job. Let God handle that, okay? You just keep doing what God has called you to do. Then the high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. 
Tell us if you're the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Well, had he spoken blasphemy? No, he spoke the truth. So the high priest says, Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you've heard the blasphemy, which really wasn't. What do you think? And they all answered, He's worthy of death. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him. And these are the Jewish people. These are the leaders of the Jewish people. And they said, prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? And you might wonder, how can they do this? These are the people who are waiting for the Messiah. Well, here's how they can do it. This is exactly where you end up when you reject the truth long enough. You make up your own truth and you even end up spitting in the face of your Messiah, slapping him, okay? Let's move on to the rest of this story here because it's about Peter. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. You see some fear here. He says, I, I don't know what you're talking about, he said. One reason this is so powerful, I think, though, this part about Peter is because every one of us feels like Peter at some point in our life. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. Man, these servant girls, are they just have it out for Peter. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. And after a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you're one of them. Your accent gives you away. It's like a, a Cajun person living in our Arkansas or Arkansas, as somebody said at one time. Then he began to call down curses. And Peter's getting crazy here. He's so afraid of getting found out. He calls down curses and he swore to them, I don't know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. Man, then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Listen, I just wanted to end our time together with this thought. Even if you feel like Peter today, can you please remember something? Remember that Jesus went through all the slander. He went through the illegal trial, all the abuse for Peter, for all the Peters in the world, like me and like you. And, and listen, he was thinking about the Father's will and how much we needed restoration. That's what got him through all of the abuse, okay? That's why he didn't call on those legions of angels. It's because of you. And so I want you to remember that today, okay? You guys have a blessed day, uh, and uh, we will see you next time.